Okay, now we're, uh, we're ready to start a new section. We just saw in the previous section, uh, introduction to architecture and machine code and how it relates to C, and now we are ready to start some assembly programming, okay? So um, this section is gonna teach you um, about moving, uh, move instructions, not movie instructions, move instructions uh, that move data between registers and memory and between registers themselves and what their operands. Um, we are also going to see the various ways we have available to address memory, to specify memory locations. Uh, then we're going to look at an example called swap that just exchanges two pieces of data in memory and uh, both are 32 and 64 bits. So that's going to be an opportunity for you to see the difference between 32-bit assembly in x86 and x86-64. Then we're gonna look at uh, arithmetic operations, how to use condition codes, how to do branches, uh, how to write loops with assembly. And then we're gonna end with switch statements. So if you recall from uh, last uh, section, we saw there's three basic kinds of instructions. Instructions that move uh, data between memory and registers, Instructions that perform arithmetic uh, operations, like um, addition, for example, and they could have as operands both a memory or, um, or registers. And then instructions that transfer control, instructions that change the flow of execution of your program in the processor. Okay, so now let's start, what we're gonna see now is um, instructions that move data between registers and memory. There's two basic types of instructions. One is called, a, of, of that type, what's called a load. A load takes an address as a parameter, goes to memory, gets that, the data stored in that address, and puts it into the register. Okay. A store does the opposite. A store takes a register as a parameter as well, and also an address, and takes the data of the register and stores in the specified memory address. And recall that memory is just a, is indexed just like an array, okay? You have an array or a table, and uh, there's multiple entries, and you're gonna access that using an index. And the equivalent of an index is in, in an array or in a table. In memory is an address, an, a, a um, memory location. Okay, so um, we saw briefly that um, last section that there are eight general purpose registers in IA32. There are eight registers. Six of them, these six here, are general purpose. And these two here, the um, ESP and EVP, have special meaning. And we're going to see uh, how they're special in a, in a little bit. So there's multiple types of uh, instructions to move data. They all start with these three letters here, move. And then this X here, which in fact could be either one of these three, B, W, or L, depending on the amount of data that's being moved. If you use move L, L stands for a long word, so you're gonna be moving four bytes worth of data. Okay, if you use move W, you're going to be moving two bytes uh, worth of data. And if you use move B, you're gonna be using, you're gonna be moving one byte worth of data. Okay? Um, now, in move instructions, takes two operands, where the data comes from and where the data goes to. Okay? So, um, now, let's, let's look at the specific instructions. Move L, source, and destination. So move data from the source to the destination. And these are operands. These are the source, this is the source operand and destination operand. Okay. And here's a type of operands that you could have uh, in a move instruction. The first one is called immediate. Think of it as a constant. This is a constant data constant integer data embedded in, in the instruction uh, itself. For example, you could have uh, X400 as one, of, as one of your operands, and that only makes sense to be a source. This doesn't, doesn't make to have a constant, it doesn't make sense to have a constant as a destination. So a constant can only, can only be a source of your move operation. Okay? So now, uh, the other type of operand is a register. Okay? It could be any of the eight registers here that we have. Okay? And um, for example, if we do move EAX comma EDX, what are we gonna be doing? So EAX and EDX are, um, are operands. So EAX in this case is going to be the source and EDX is going to be the destination. And we're gonna get the contents of EAX and store it in, in EDX, okay? So as I said before, ESP and EBP are, are reserved for special use, okay? But they can still be used as, as operands. Now, uh, the, the third and final type of operand in move instructions is memory, okay? So, and since we're talking about move L and we move four bytes worth of data, that means that an address there is going to be specifying the beginning 
of this four white uh, four byte words that's going to be uh, used as an operand. Okay, and the one way to use an operand is to use to specify memory operand. Here's an example: is to put, for example, a register in parentheses. When you're doing that, you're saying that EAX holds an address, and now the operand for your move operation is the data containing the address uh, that is stored in register EAX. But as we'll see later, there's be many, many types of address modes, many ways of specifying address. This is just one of them. Okay, so the many combinations of move instructions. So, uh, for example, uh, continuing with our uh, move L instruction, so the source can either be an, an immediate value, a register value, or a memory value. Okay. Suppose that you have an immediate as a, as a source operand, and then you can have a register as a destination operand. Here's what we have. We have four is a con that's an example here. I have an example here. Uh, four is a constant, so it is a source operand. EAX is the register, and what this is going to do is going to store value uh, x4 in register EAX. Now, we can also have memory as a destination. So if we do move L, this constant minus uh, 147 uh, in decimal here, and store to EX in parentheses, and as I just told you in the previous slides, this says that now we're going to store it in a memory location specified by the address stored in register EAX. Now, uh, continue our uh, examples here. We could have register as a source and a register as a destination. That's the simplest case. That's a simple case, right? And uh, here we have, we're going to get the contents of EAX and copy to register EDX. Now, we can go from registered to memory. So, for example, we can get the contents of EAX and store into, remember this is in parentheses, so into the memory location specified by the address stored in register EDX. Finally, we could have memory as a source operand and registered as a destination operand. This will be a type of load. You're loading memory into a loading memory data into a register. Okay, so here we're gonna get the contents of the location specified by register EAX and store it in register EDX. Okay. You cannot do memory memory transfer with a single instruction. So how would you do that then? Well, you move it to a register. You could get data from memory to a register. That's step number one. And then you can get data from a register to memory. That'll be step number two. That's how you move data from memory to memory. So now let's see what's the C analog of all of these operations. So here I have, for example, variable A that happens to be mapped in a register, uh, and we store constant hex 4. And uh, another example here, for example, I have uh, this, this uh, pointer P underscore A. We're going to dereference the pointer and say we're going to store the constant minus 147 into, uh, the, regist into the location specified by pointer P A. Okay, so um, now since memory, now that means that since this is a pointer, it's on the left-hand side, it's going to be the destination. That's why here in the destination we have um, a memory operand. And if we look at the, the address held by pointer PA, that's what's contained in register EAX. So um, now these other three cases here are also pretty simple. This if I had two register two variables mapped into register, var uh, D and var A. We're just copying um, the value from var A to var D. And then here I have, uh, if I have var A, which could be stored in a register, is stored in a register, and I copy into a pointer, same thing here, uh, pointer PD, uh, since memory, since we're storing po pointers point somewhere in memory, the destination operand has to be uh, memory. And finally here, what we're doing is loading data in, in this last example here, we're loading data from memory, so we have a pointer here on the right-hand side into a register, and in this case, as far as these happen to be mapped to a register. So let's look at the various ways we have uh, to um, address uh, memory. So um, these are the basic addressing modes, there are many others, but uh, the first one is called uh, indirect access. Indirect just says that um, now the register contains an address, 
and then we're going to use that um, we're going to use the contents of the register as an address to memory. So memory, as, as we said, memory is just like an array, okay? So that means that uh, we have an index here, and inside this index is the contents of the register specified a, a, a inside the address expression. An example here, I saw before, probably I'm, I'm repeating this for the third time now, um, this register ECX holds an address. Using the parentheses here, we say now we want the contents of memory whose address is uh, uh, stored in ECX. Now, um, this is a basic one. The, the other type of addressing mode is called displacement. And the way we specify this, we have a little, you know, uh, a constant outside our parentheses here. And all it does is it adds that constant to uh, the base register. So register R specifies a memory address, but the final memory address is obtained by adding the contents of that register with uh, with this constant d. For example, here what we're doing is we're getting um, this, uh, the contents of EBP, okay, so the contents of EBP, EBP, we're adding h, okay, and we are using that as the address to memory, and we're storing that into edx. Easy, right? So now let's use this basic uh, addressing modes in an example. So here we have this C function here called swap that does the following. It takes two uh, pointers as a parameter and it gets the contents of XP, stores, um, um, it gets a, and stores into a temporary variable C0. It gets the contents of, y, uh, of the pointer YP and stores into, into a uh, temporary variable T1 and then stores T1 into XP and T0 into YP. So we're just swapping the contents um, pointed, so swapping the locations pointed by these pointers. Now, as you see here, so okay, now this, this, this is the assembly version of our C code, the C code we just saw. And so we have three basic um, pieces here. One is called a setup. It's getting and reading the parameters and, and, and uh, setting up the, the stack and so on. We have the body that does the body of the function, the body of the execution, and then we have to finish up where uh, we restore the stack to its original location, restore register values, and, um, and then return to the caller. So let's see how, how um, stack works. Now we have uh, our, the body, let's focus on the body here, that's the body of, uh, of our swap function, and we have six assembly instructions. So um, let's go now step by step. And the registers we're using here, here's the mapping of register to values. So YP here happens to be mapped into register ECX. XP here happens to be mapped into register EDX. Now T0 uh, was mapped into register EX and T1 was mapped into register EBX. And this mapping is a choice of the compiler. Okay, the compiler chooses how to map the variables into, into registers. Okay, so now on the, on the right-hand side here, uh, we have what each one of these assembly instructions is representing, and this is the state of our stack in the beginning uh, of our execution. Okay, so now we are ready to, to, to see how this ac gets executed step by step. Okay, so now we here we have our registers, that's uh, that when we begin executing. And recall that both X, YP and XP are um, addresses, right? So they're, they're pointers. That means that the, the con they're pointers, so they're variables that hold addresses. And the addresses, uh, the address of YP is um, 120, which is right here. So, and uh, that means that YP points to this location. And XP is 124, that means that XP points to, to, to this location here. And our registers and our um, EBP, our stack pointer, is located uh, in address 104. So EBP points to here. And now we're going to see that a lot of values are relative, a lot of memory locations are relative to the stack pointer. Let's execute the first instruction now. When we execute this move here, what are we doing? Well, we are uh, storing the, the contents of YP as a pointer into ECX. So since YP is stored 12 bytes away from EBP, we're going to use as a source operand a, um, 
a displacement address mode, right? A, a displacement address. So uh, the way the address is obtained is by getting EBP, adding 12, and we're going to use that memory of that as our source operand, and then store it in, in ECX, and that's what happens. So we get 120 and store it, store it in ECX. Great. So um, what we did there, we just got then the address of YP and stored in ECX. The same thing for XP, but now note that this changed to 8 now because XP stored 8 bytes away from uh, EBP. Great. So now EDX holds a 124, which is the address held by pointer XP. So what, what we want to do now is store the contents of the pointer YP into register EAX. But remember that we had just put YP into ECX, so now ECX holds an address. That means if we just use ECX an, as an address, we're actually getting the data pointed by YP. And since YP was uh, held address 120, that is pointing right here, okay? When we um, execute this instruction, we're getting the contents pointed by YP that happens to be stored in ECX and loading it into EAX. That's what happened here, okay? All right, so now let's do the next step. We're doing the same thing for XP now. We're getting the contents of the address pointed by XP and loading it into uh, EBX. But the uh, pointer XP was stored in register EDX, so we use a memory, memory source operand here, to get that and store it in EBX. And um, so we get, and that happens to be, we have EBX, right, which is, um, yeah, so EBX is, is a destination, EDX is 124, that's an address, we're going to use that to get, this is the address here, get that contents there and store it in EBX because that's the destination register. So what are we going to do now? Well, now we're going to get the contents of EAX, which was uh, contents of IP, and store in XP because we're swapping it, right? So, and we still have uh, the address of XP in EDX, so now we have this as a destination operand. So when, when, when we do that, well, what's going to happen? This gets updated with the, with the contents of EAX. And same thing happens when we're storing to YP. And note that we just left uh, the addresses of the pointers into, into the register because we use them to read them and then later to write to them.